All right, welcome to Disability Support Services at UNA. Um, I'm going to take just a few minutes to talk about the services that our office offers in the process for requesting services. Um, so our office provides support and appropriate accommodations for students with a variety of disabilities. No student is by any means obligated to disclose that they have a disability to the university, but we are here to assist if we're needed. So here is a quick look at our mission statement. Um, basically, we ensure that students with disabilities have equal opportunity to succeed at UNA. Um, and we'll talk a, a little later about what types of accommodations we can offer to make that happen. So this is a quote by Brian Tracy that we have displayed in our office. It serves as a reminder for both our staff and students that while there are certainly challenges that individuals with disabilities face, they can be overcome and we're here to help overcoming those challenges um, be a little easier. Um, so you might be wondering what qualifies as a disability. Um, a disability is defined as a physical or mental impairment that substantially limits one or more major life activities. So this can look a lot of different ways for a lot of different students. Um, for someone who uses a wheelchair, their major life activity could be walking or someone diagnosed with ADHD, that major life activity may be reading for class. Um, so there's some more examples listed on this slide. You, there's brain injury, hearing impairment, autism, diabetes. Um, there, the list goes on and on. It, it's not exhaustive, um, but those are just some of the um, diagnoses that we can help with. So here we have some examples of accommodations that we offer at UNA. Now, in order to receive accommodations, you must be registered within our office and have a qualifying disability. Our website has the specific information about the documentation that you'll need to provide in order to receive accommodations. Like I said before, there's absolutely no requirement that a student discloses to the university that they have a disability. However, in order to receive accommodations, the student must initiate the process with our office to develop an accommodation plan. So this is true even if a student already received accommodations in high school. Um, accommodations may be different than what was provided in high school since courses cannot be fundamentally altered at UNA. Accommodations are not in place until we have completed a process in the DSS office and begin the day the professor receives the letter of accommodation. Accommodations do not have to be used all the time but we encourage students that this is not the time to abruptly stop using accommodations. So students may determine um, halfway through the semester that they don't need the accommodation plan for a specific class, but we remind students that accommodations are not retroactive. If students fail to ask for accommodations and perform poorly, there's little that can be done. So say you're, you're using your accommodations and halfway through the semester, you decide I don't really need these anymore, um, so you stop using them and then you start doing bad again, um, there's really not much we can do. We can't go back in and change something that's already been done. So our office has a person first language pledge, meaning that when we are referring to individuals with disabilities, we always refer to the individual first and the disability second. So this next slide has some examples. Um, so you can see by reading some of the examples uh, that language can be very powerful. There's a big difference between saying the disabled person and a person with a disability. We always want to use respectful and empowering language that doesn't define a person by their diagnosis or condition. Next we have our honor society, Delta Alpha Pi. It's an international honor society specifically for undergraduate and graduate students with disabilities. All students registered through our office have the opportunity to join Delta Alpha, Alpha Pi. This is a great opportunity for students to develop leadership and advocacy skills. The requirements to be initiated can be found on our website, and we'll have that uh, website listed at the end of the slides. We also have what we call a peer mentoring program. So this program matches incoming students with disabilities with upperclassmen with or without disabilities to serve as a mentor. This is completely optional, but students have shared that this is a really great opportunity to make friends and become more familiar with campus. It's always nice to have a peer that you can turn to for advice and support. 
We also offer self-advocacy workshops each semester. So these workshops serve to empower students with disabilities and give them tools to vocalize and protect their rights regarding equal access on campus and in other life situations. We organize role play scenarios and discussions to help students with disabilities learn these skills. All right, so when should I schedule a meeting? Um, accommodations are not in place until we have completed a process in the DSS office. Students need to begin the accommodation process with our office as soon as possible. Students can do this by phoning or coming by the office to schedule an individual intake assessment. It helps us plan for your accommodations and it helps students to plan ahead of time rather than waiting until the semester is in full swing to make all of these plans. It's important to plan because sometimes a student may need to obtain more recent and relevant documentation. Providers may not send documentation as quickly as you would like, and there are some accommodations that take time to implement. So really, just as soon as you can, you're going to want to go ahead and start this process. Um, this slide is for parents, so we cannot discuss a student um, with parents without the student's consent and knowledge. Students should be the one to contact the DSS office since they are now in college and considered an adult. If they want, students may bring a parent or guardian to the initial appointment. Parents are welcome to contact our office to ask questions regarding the accommodations process. However, we cannot grant accommodations based solely upon a parent's request. It will be up to the student to contact our office. And we only make appointments for students when they contact the office. So this may be very different than what you're used to. In the past, the school probably talked to parents often tested students and had permission from parents for students to have services, but now students must contact our office first. All right, well, thank you so much for your time today. If you have any questions at all, our contact information is listed here. Our website has a wealth of information available, but please feel free to call our office if you have any questions or concerns at all. We can't wait to see you in the fall.